I'm not often involved in that serious a situation. Usually my situation is somewhat different. I'm looking into an astrologer's claims, or I'm looking into some sort of a, of a pseudoscientific thing, pretty well obviously pseudoscientific thing, but I always have to remember an experience that occurred to me. We all have the easy answer of, well, I guess that's a ghost, or it must be paranormal. It could be poltergeist, and we walk away from it because we can't or won't look a little further into it. Some years ago, when I lived in New Jersey, uh, well, my house, I must tell you, first of all, is a strange sort of a place. It's sort of a wayside stop for itinerant magicians, conjurers, mountebanks, various characters of ill repute who will come by, identify themselves to me, and there's always a spare bedroom or a sleeping bag available to someone or other. And uh, I often walk in, I feed people there I've never seen before in my life, and pretty soon I get to think that I don't want to see them again, either because they drink up all my beer and never contribute. <laughs> I, uh, I came home after a couple of days away by car, I was very, very tired, and um, I came in on a weekend, it was a Saturday night, and my foster son Alexis was in the kitchen, and he was helping a couple of magicians drink up the beer. And uh, I walked in and I said, Guys, I'm very, very tired. I'm going to bed. I'll see you in the morning. And they said, fine. And I guess they carried on until late at night. I went in, fell asleep, woke up the next morning, came staggering into the kitchen in time to see them eating up more of my groceries in the form of breakfast at this time. Sat down, got a half a cup of coffee under me and straightened up at the table. And Alexis looked at me, my foster son. He said, what's with you? And I said, wow, I think last night I might have actually had a classic example of the OOBE. That's the out-of-body experience. You see, when scientists or parapsychologists even uh, are, able to, are able to express something in two or three words or a word with three or four sim uh, syllables in it, it immediately becomes scientific. So they call this out-of-body experience. It's hyphenated, and it sounds pretty good, O-O-B-E. It means that you somehow find yourself out of your body and looking down on it or from a distance or whatever. And Alexis looked at me and said, sure. You? And I said, hey, got to be honest, it appears to me as if I did undergo such an experience. Okay, give us a description. And the two magicians at the table leaned closer over their bacon and eggs and wanted to hear what I had to say. I said, well, I remember waking up in the middle of the night. I remember last night I, I couldn't get to sleep. I was super tired, but then, of course, as soon as you hit the mattress, you're staring at the ceiling, and that happened to me. So I turned on the television receiver, and uh, it had some program or other on it, and um, it went on and on and on, and I guess I fell asleep. And I remember waking up in the middle of the night, and I felt that I was in a position like this, spread eagled against the ceiling of my bedroom. And I'm looking down at this bed, rather large bed, I thrash around a lot at night, and um, Alice, who was my black cat at that time, of course was curled up in the middle of the bed, so that I had to be way over at one side, and I was way over at one side trying not to disturb the cat. Of course, you wouldn't dare do that. <laughs> She's taken the exact center of the bed, curled up in a big black ball, and as I'm up against the ceiling, I notice that the room is lit in sort of a grayish light. Look down at the television set, it's psh, and there's static all over the screen. You know, the white noise sort of thing, and confetti on the screen, and that's illuminating the room, and I'm seeing myself in bed, scrunched over at one side, and this big chartreuse sort of a green bedspread on it with Alice, the black cat, in the middle of it, and I noted that as she opened up her eyes, she had green eyes the same color as the bedspread. It almost looked like two holes punched right through her head. It was, and she looked at me, and as cats do, she went, hmm, and went right back to sleep. <laughs> now, that was a very strong experience for me, folks, and I could tell you right now at this moment, yes, I really believe, believe, I'm not convinced of it, but I believe from the evidence that's presented to me, I had an out-of-body experience that matches the description that we've all heard about so many times. But fortunately for me, in a way, I'm not uh, really dead set against having my belief structure disturbed or having new facts come in that will disturb my previous convictions in matters. It doesn't really disturb me that much. But fortunately for you, so that I can give you this anecdotal experience, which I think is very powerful, and fortunately for me, I am able to tell you what actually had happened. Alexis looked at me and he said, I got two things to show you. He went to the foot of the stairs and came up with a big transparent 
laundry bag. He had taken it halfway down. He never took it all the way down to the laundry room. He took it halfway down. That's the way kids do. And uh, he brought it all the way upstairs. And inside, I noted a bunch of sheets, pillowcases, and the chartreuse bedspread. He said, that's been here, there since yesterday. Then I don't have the chartreuse bedspread on my bed. I dashed to the door, looked in, and it was this, oh, God. I lost it someplace, thank goodness. Um, it is a terrible hunting scene. I don't know where I got it. Somebody left it. I don't know. But it was the only one that I used when the other one was in the laundry. He had taken that one off, put it in the laundry, and the other one was on there. So I couldn't have seen Alice in the middle of the hunting scene. I would have noticed that. And he said, look out on the patio. I looked outside. He said, Harry here, one of the magicians, is highly allergic to cats. I put her out yesterday around 4 in the afternoon. She hasn't been in the house since, and she's not very happy about it all. And I looked out, and there she was on the patio and had been out all night. She could not have been in the bedroom, curled up in the middle. It was a dream, an hallucination, if you will. It could not have happened. Physically, I had two very good pieces of evidence that it could not have happened. Now, that's important, folks, in that if I did not have either one or both of those pieces of evidence, I would now have to say to you, to the best of my knowledge, I had an out-of-body experience. But all the other out-of-body experiences we hear of, we have to wonder now. Those folks are not quite as skeptical about the subject as I am in most cases. If they don't have some convincing evidence to the contrary, what's to stop them from saying, I'm absolutely certain I've had an out-of-body experience because there is no other explanation for it except the possible and rather parsimonious conclusion that they were either dreaming or had some sort of a, a hallucination, whatever. It might have been a bad pork chop for all we know. <laughs> Now, I ask you to consider that carefully, and please don't forget it, because it is a good example of how even the arch skeptic haha, could possibly have been taken in. For more of James Randi and the Educational Foundation, make sure you visit randy.org.